Hey there, good evening, and welcome to tonight's Ditch Book Twitter chat. Usually, I, it's not actually a Twitter chat because it's not really on Twitter. Um, so most of the time on Thursday evenings, we get together at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific, and we'll talk for 30 minutes on Twitter, sharing tweets and all of that good stuff. But tonight, instead of doing a regular Twitter chat like that, guess what? You've got me and Stephanie on video. And so um, we are super, super excited to get to talk to you tonight about powerful practices for remote learning. And I'm starting to see some of the people coming into the chat. So we're going to be bouncing back and forth between the chat and um, our uh, questions and our, our discussion and everything. So um, real quick, Steph, before we get started, why don't you take a second and introduce yourself to everyone? Okay. Um, my name is Stephanie DeMichael. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. I am a digital learning coach and digital designer, and I like to make digital do-overs. I guess that's what I do. Um, one of my favorite things to be, though, is a ditch book ambassador, which means we go around evangelizing all of those ways to ditch the textbook and worksheets. And um, especially now, I guess I just, oh, hey, Evan. Hi, Evan. I just got, I just saw his uh, comment. Um, uh -huh. Especially now, just finding ways to, my. I like to help. So I've been super busy. I've been busier while everyone else is like quarantined and binge watching Netflix. I've been super busy the last two weeks. Nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm very much the same way. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, I'm going to throw a couple of the uh, introductions in. By the way, if you're watching this uh, live, welcome. And we'd love for you to check in with your um your name and where you are. And also in the comments, as we're getting kind of warmed up here, um, mm -hmm. let me put this banner up here real quick. Now that we're in, this is what I'd love to see. Check in with your name, role, location, and then tell us about your week too. I know you could probably go like on and on and on in mm -hmm. a comment about your week, but I mean, it's it's been different for everybody. So I am really curious to see how everything has gone for everyone. So let me throw some of these in here real quick and let's see who's here. I see Cheryl. Hey, Cheryl. Good to see you. There's a regular right there. There's Howard. Hey, he says, can I super chat for $5? I'm not at that level yet. I'm like just dabbling into it. So um, maybe one of these days we'll see. Uh, looks like Katie is here from Ottawa in Canada. Welcome. There's Carla. Carla, it's good to see you. Here's Katie. She said, quick question. You had another live stream scheduled for earlier today. Did it glitch? I can't access it. Okay. So what Katie was saying was um, I had another one about digital devices and um, no, what was it? It was, it was like devices and equity or something. We were going to talk to some folks from Atlantic Public Schools um, who are getting some grants for devices in their schools. And um, my co-host, Holly Clark, had an internet outage right before it was supposed to start. Oh. So we're going to have to reschedule. We're planning on rescheduling oh. that one for next week. So if you're watching for that, that's what happened there. We've got Rebecca from Wyoming. Hey, Rebecca, good to see you. We've got Tornette from San Diego. Here's another regular. There's Evan Mosier, Evan. Davenport, Iowa, checking in. I saw Shannon, Carly. Carly's uh, in there too. Yep. Shannon Petty from Alabama. And there's Carly Mora from Concord, California with her beautiful family and her picture. And then there's Kavita from Malaysia. Hey, it's good Hi. to see you here. Curtis, there's another familiar face from Twitter, for me at least, from Saskatchewan. Good to see you. There's Kavita again. Mrs. Walter is here. That's Jen Walter from Missouri. We've got Karen from South Dakota. Oh, we're checking in with Shannon. Let me keep clicking through here real quick. Vicky is here. Vicky Sedgwick from Los Angeles. There's another one I've been following on Twitter for a long time. Mm -hmm. We've got Shannon Davis from North Carolina. And we've also got Pam from Alabama. She says, now trying to find out what I can to help my teachers since the school year has just gone online. My teachers are apprehensive to say the least. And then Christine says, Christine, who needs classroom? Needs Love classroom. it. Yeah, mm -hmm. Exactly. So um, I thought I would share real quick before we get too far yeah. into this. Um, my kids, uh, eighth grade, sixth grade, fourth grade, and my wife who teaches high school social studies, um, are all on e-learning. And I was just telling Steph before we came on mm -hmm. here that 
Um, the way it's working with us is we have 20 waiver days in the state of Indiana that the governor has given us. Waiver days meaning you can cancel school and you don't have to make it up. And so our superintendent has decided to take two waiver days a week and then do three e-learning days a week. And we can continue that schedule using our waiver days little by little by little until the very last day of school. So I thought that was a pretty good, pretty That's, good gig. I, yeah, I like that because what I see on Twitter is a lot of people not understanding what's going to happen or they're trying to do it differently. And to me, that's like a nice break for everybody. It gives the mm -hmm. kids, you know, my own kids. I've got a sophomore um, at Ohio State who's home now for the year. And I have a senior in high school. So he's having a bummer of a year, of course, because he actually likes school and is social and wants to be there. Um, but I've been watching them. It's been interesting. They, I think what I've liked the best is that the teachers haven't tried to recreate a seven hour day mm -hmm. online, you know? And so I like that. I like what they're doing in Indiana with the idea of let's give teachers a day, a waiver day and learn more and delve in and try some of these tools instead of trying to cram everything down their throats at once. Mm -hmm. Yep. So kind of yep. work it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's do a couple more check-ins, then we'll go straight to our okay. first question. So we've got Pam Hubler is here from Charleston, South Carolina. She's going to be listening in while her family watches a movie. Mm -hmm. I was just telling Steph, right in there in the Miller household, they are watching, um, uh, what is Infinity it? War. Avengers Infinity War. War. That's right. And I know one person that's checked in right here. Laura Steinbrink is going to be thrilled to hear that because she's one of the biggest Avengers fans that I know. So uh, Laura is here from Missouri. Speaking of Missouri, there's Mandy Tolan. Mandy. Good to see you, Mandy. Miriam's here from New Hampshire. Dorma is here. Good to see you. We've got Monique checking in. Hey, good to see you too. Kimberly is here from Apex, North Carolina. And Pam says, I love all movie, movie, Marvel movies, yeah. right, Laura? Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm very much the mm -hmm. same way, too. So, And Laura, last one here as before we get our first question. First live, and she's geeking up because Matt and Pam and others have heard me. <laughs> I've heard on the podcast. Ah, I love yeah. it. That's great. Laura, I'm glad that you're here. Good to, good to have you check in. And there's Justin sneaking right in as our last one too. So, um, and again, continue to check in so that everybody can, can see you, but mm -hmm. we're going to jump right over to our very first question because this, um, this week, this is our title, powerful mm -hmm. practices for remote learning, because, you know, Steph and I were just talking about this and, um, I know that it's, very much a topic on the forefront of lots of people's minds. Yeah. Everybody's trying to make sense of the new norm. And that's, that's really what you're seeing with a lot of people too. Right, Steph? Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, it was just weird. like literally two weeks ago, it was just all of a sudden when I knew, I actually, I woke, I woke up, um, on a Monday morning, they had canceled Ohio State. They said, well, we're extending spring break and we're going to virtual online learning. And that's when I knew. I knew something big was that this was going to have a huge ripple effect. So I started, like, all of a sudden, I just, I mean, tweets, texts, phone calls, everything. And I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm on this. What can I do? I mean, what can I do to get everything I can? Because it really caught everyone unawares. I think the hardest thing was that, not a lot of people had a plan, and I hate to say that out loud. Did I did I said that out loud? But we didn't have a lot. We didn't have a plan. It's so a safe place. Steph. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the safe space. Yes, yes it so, is. That's um, right. I I did. I sit like for the next thirty six hours. I barely slept. I barely ate. I did shower, and I put together this um, just a quick ebook so I could send it out. Because where I work, I support about forty plus different school districts. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay. Instead of me answering all these emails, let me put together a guide. So that's what I did. So. Yeah, absolutely. And there it is on the screen right there, right? A quick yeah, start guide to distance learning. This is a fantastic resource, by the way. And I'm going to drop a link to uh, Steph's ebook in the chat. So feel free to click on that. And um, you can also go to stephaniedemichael.org, her website, which... I will also drop a link uh, for that into the chat too. So um, she's been putting out a bunch of good resources. So you can definitely yeah. go check that out. And, so. and that guide is live. It's published because I'm updating it 
almost every day with and taking stuff off as I find best practices on Twitter and what people are sharing, I add to it. So. Yep. Yep. Very good. Okay. Oh my goodness. We have sketch noting royalty with us here, folks. <laughs> Whoa. Monica Spillman is here from Rome, Georgia. She didn't even say it because I already know it. I know where you are. I hope that wasn't creepy that I just oh said where you were from Monica. So, but um, yeah, so good. So good to see, see her as well. Okay. So let's jump over to our first question. Mm -hmm. All right. Cause we're dying to hear oh, from all of you. Yeah. So here's the first one. What is working for you with remote learning? This is a pretty general one, you know, kind of lob lobbing you an easy pitch so that you can hit it mm -hmm. out of the park. And as we do these questions, I would love for you to, if you have links to specific resources or anything, just go ahead and drop those into the chat. And we're going to be taking a look at those afterwards. Plus people can click on them and grab them as well. Yes. But just want to know what is working for folks as far as remote learning. So um, I'll actually start with this, even though I'm not doing specifically remote learning with students right now, I'm watching my kids and my wife do it too. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll tell you a couple of things that I've been thrilled about. Um, number one, my sixth grade daughter had a video call with all of the teachers in her team, you know, social studies, science, math, mm -hmm. English teachers. And um, <laughs> she said it was kind of awkward because they started this video call and she was the first one on the call. So it was just her and all of her teachers. And she's like, <laughs> hey guys. <laughs> yeah, and they're all like, ah! and Allie's like, oh, I'm like the only kid. What is going on? But mm -hmm. after, she she kind of got like emotional about it because she's missed yeah. her teachers and there's been so much you know so much flex when it comes to her um schedule mm -hmm. so it was really important um her science teacher uh started um started giving the kids challenges so she's given them their assignments of course but then she's also giving them challenges which are just yeah. fun science things that they can do. And I am thrilled with that. I think that's such a great thing because we've got a lot of kids who are going to have some free time on their hands. And if we give them something academic, that's interesting and fun for them to go dabble in, yeah. then, Hey, you know, yeah. go for it. Right. So yeah. Steph, what are you hearing or seeing that that makes sense to you? Well, I'm, I like the comments I'm looking at. I mean, obviously screencastify, uh, Mrs. Walter from AM, AMS staff. Yes. Screencastify is definitely working. Um, mm -hmm. And I recommend that's one of my top top tools to have because it just you'll be up and running with it in five minutes. Um, Flipgrid, obviously, Edpuzzle. Um, if I had to recommend those three, oh, and Book Creator, love Book Creator because that's mm -hmm. with the kids. But in terms of what's working, what I've seen, um, uh, Jennifer Gonzalez from the Cult of Pedagogy had a tw uh, Twitter thread on the March twenty first, I think, and she was asking everybody, "How's it going with video?" Um, and I, I saw some good points in there that someone said, you know what, whatever you think you need, whatever you think you need to have, cut it in half and then possibly cut it again. Um, yeah. Another person said the, the idea of video, that it is the video, that the kids still, even though this is video generation, they need to see our faces and just that certainty. And uh, one teacher was doing a morning check in every day, a morning announcement, just like they would at school. Um, another teacher was doing short, uh, having kids sign up for conferences. She was a high school teacher. So she was having kids sign up for high school class, um, having up conferences, and then she'd meet with them four or five at a time. So I think that's working. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I just saw this one from Vicki. She said, we're lucky that our K2 students are using Seesaw and yeah. three through six Google Classroom. And so those were and are continuing to work. Checking in on Zoom has been really great too. And I'm glad that she brings that up. You know, it's interesting. Um, and Vicki, I think you're right on with this, that lots of those K2 uh, teachers really do adore Seesaw and a lot of the older ones like Google Classroom. I'm also seeing some that are flip-flopping that because Seesaw has, if, if you've heard of Seesaw before, I always think it's kind of like Facebook for the classroom. You know, there's a feed and you can add things to it. Um, they've added a lot of things to the user experience to make it better for like laptops and Chromebooks and stuff. And they're trying to appeal to an older crowd as well as the younger crowd. So they're trying to broaden it a little bit. And I've even seen littles use Google classroom very successfully as well too. So, um, you know, it's, it's interesting to, to see. Yeah. 
And even if they're not big readers, I've seen teachers, you know, do um, an image mm -hmm. instead, you know, just kind of like a, an image to, to guide the young, to guide littles as to what they're supposed to be doing. Um, I know a lot of people are mentioning not only Google Classroom, but now the new big thing is Zoom. And in fact, Krista, Krista's in here, and Krista put together, Krista, you should put it in the comments, the link to your Zoom guide. That would be super duper helpful. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Go ahead and drop a link into that if you think of it. Now she's on the other end going, oh. <laughs> but, like I hate Stephanie. <laughs> but her spot. Yeah, yeah. Join the club. <laughs> Um, Evan says, I know Zoom is available, but I've had several meetings on Google Meet this last week and a half. And I've seen I've seen lots of comments about Google Meet. I know that um, mm -hmm. they've made a lot of really nice features available in the midst of this whole pandemic. Yeah. Um, the G Suite enterprise uh, features where you can record videos and you can live stream are mm -hmm. all available now. And um, I wanted to show real quick over here. I just recently did a, is this the one? I just recently did a post that I wanted to share with you all real quick that I can give you a link to. This is um, how to use Google Meet for e-learning and on or e-learning and online learning. And I'm dropping mm -hmm. a comment or a link into the chat right now. And really, this post uh, talks about Google Meet, but it isn't like just for Google Meet. I mean, a lot of this stuff applies to Zoom too. So. In the post, I talk a little bit about what it looks like yeah, to, you know, to Sorry, join a call. Yeah, that's Sorry. okay. Oh, did she put it in there? She's going to. Oh, good, good, good. Okay. And what, what it all looks like. But then we talk a little bit about some of the tips for successful meetings. And I know um, now this was sort of the, the brainchild of um, me and Carly Mora. Uh, Carly was like, hey, I'm hearing some people saying that it would be really nice to have um, some tips for using Google Meet. And so she and I kind of collaborated together and made this infographic. And this ended up taking a tone more of like, um, you know, for, for adults doing like virtual staff meetings. So it's stuff like send an agenda out, make sure one person, the moderator, one person takes notes, mute your mic. Oh my goodness. We need like a public service announcement for this one. people. <laughs> I know that you all are good at it probably, but there's a lot of people that are not like mute. Your mic is a big one. And so after that, um, she and I started brainstorming on one that we could do for students. And so this is sort of a twist on it for students. Mm -hmm. um, you know, similar stuff. Um, use the chat. So, and see, this is one of the things I liked about this one. This was one of Carly's ideas. Use the chat to raise your hand or share questions or ideas. And see, so many times we hear teachers saying, oh, the chat, I want to just disable the chat. Let's just get rid of the chat. And what I love about this is this is showing kids how the chat is really supposed to be used. Now, does that mean that they're never, ever going to abuse it? No, but maybe if they know what it's actually supposed to be used for, you know, that, that could be really, really big. Yeah. So. Um, um, Mandy, Mandy also has a good point about that new extension. She mentioned that today, Mandy, if you could drop that in the chat too, um, that there's an extension for Google meet where it does, what did she call it? Like a Brady bunch view. It's grid view, but it looks like everybody's on the Brady bunch. Yeah. Yeah. Oh absolutely. yeah. Carly, Carly. That's right. About the hand raising. Mm -hmm. But Sean Fahey had an idea to, for the kids to put, because you can't raise your hand in a Google Meet or a Google Hangout, but the kids use the emoji with the kid raising his hand. Yeah, that's a brilliant idea. Yeah, I'd seen that, that Sean had tweeted that out earlier too. That's a, if it doesn't have the option, then sometimes we can hack the option into existence, right? So yeah. um, let's see, here's another one. Um, I work one-to-one -one in small groups. So my job is to help these kids access curriculum, mostly in the classroom, I prompt them to get materials or take notes or take walks. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. um, oh, there's Sean again. He says, live stream with Google Meet. I have a full schedule of webinars with two schools this week, I bet. Mm -hmm. I can only imagine. So, um, oh, here's another one that I don't even think of. You know, Janelle says we can use Google Meet with teachers, but only Blackboard Collaborate is accessible to use for with our students. Yeah. I think that's such a point that you bring up because different schools and school district have different policies related to these video chats. And so um, I think that's, that's really important to make sure that you know what is okay and, and mm -hmm. what is not. So um, good stuff. Okay. 
We've seen lots of good stuff here from all of you. Let's go on to our next question. And here's our next question, number two. How can we create community in online spaces? Um, you know, I've seen a lot of chatter on Twitter and a lot of people talking about this, about how in the midst of all that is going on, it is pretty important to help kids get that sense of community and get those connections, whether it's, you know, through text or through asynchronous recorded video or through video calls or whatever, like building the community. Steph, wouldn't you do, what do you think about that? Is like building community pretty important? I, I, I might be real unpopular for saying this because I understand as teachers, and especially at this time of year, when we're in a race to cover content because of state testing, which may not, in some states is, you know, not is negated at this point, but I'm a big fan right now in this moment, not of all remote learning, but in this moment of community over content. So what that means is whether it is using the got Google comments feature in Google Classroom, parlay ideas and doing a roundtable Socratic seminar discussion with your kids, um, just putting up Padlet, just even, honestly, just even opening Google Hangout and just hanging out with the kids. I, again, I saw something on um, Jennifer Gonzalez's thread where one teacher was giving the kids recess. They were to Google Hangout, she'd give them recess and they can get on and tell jokes to each other for five minutes. Mm -hmm. I thought, oh my God, you know, and they are, so it's like they're still connecting because it is, it's probably super scary for kids and their whole routine has been established, um, has been just completely disrupted. So again, my, my big thing is community over content, at least yeah. for now. Yep, no, I think that's, I think that's super smart. Let's go to the yeah. comments and let's see what people have been saying here. Um, so let's see. I like what Tina just posted here. Did I get it? Oh, I caught, well, let's see what Curtis says. Zoom breakout rooms need to have yeah. interaction. Yeah. That's a, that's a good way to, to, to be able to do that too. Yeah. Um, here's Katie saying my whole province is waiting until after April 5th to start curriculum, uh, right along with what, what Steph was saying, partly to organize effectively, but also yeah. to allow everyone to adjust. Oh, Matt, that thing you tweeted out yesterday from Rachel Marker about just to even get the kids used to online learning. She had that um, choice, that connect for bingo board just to create more community. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to see here in a second if I can find that. I know there's a there's a link to it somewhere. So um, let's see. There's Tina. I've been trying to get this one on the screen. I use the Alice Wheeler suggestion of one slide deck. Um, writing prompt or reflection yeah. with video. That's good. If you have like one slide deck where each kid has their own slide and then they're yeah. able to work on something all in one place, but they still have their own space. Yeah. So I really like that. Jen says there's an awesome teacher in my school yeah. using Facebook live every day to do an experiment. Oh, I love that. <laughs> and check in the students mostly via their parents, but that's yeah. community. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Okay, here was a question yeah. by Dorma. She says, how do we get all the students to live stream in a Google Meet? Um, so what you can do, if you want to mm -hmm. use Google Meet, we'll just speak to that since that's the one you brought up, is that if you start a Google Meet meeting, first of all, whenever it first pops up, there's a little blank text box that asks you to give it a name. Just put like, you know, your last name and the date or mm -hmm. um put some number, basically put a nickname in there and start the chat. And then up at the top of the screen, there's your link. Mm -hmm. And so you grab that link and you share that link with your students. That's, that's a pretty easy way to do it. Right, Steph? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that totally works. If anybody has had different ways of sharing those with students, then definitely drop those into the chat. Let's see what else we've got. Oh, oh this is good. Yeah. yeah. He says, I've seen where teachers post a Google form that just asks, how are you doing? Great way to connect. Yeah. I've, I've heard of teachers doing this at the beginning of class in a face-to-face -face classroom. And it's like that little silent way for kids to be like, hey, listen, something's going on and my world is just not normal, is just not right right now. And it's like that little quiet way to, to get that across. Um, I have a link to that. So in, in my ebook, I'm trying to find what page that's on, but I have, oh, here it is. It's on page 19 of my book. Um, I borrowed an idea like that from teacher Mari 
or Mary, probably Mary Venturino. Um, so I borrowed that idea from her, but it's it's in my ebook that if you want to make a copy of that Google form for checking in. Yeah, that's good. Here's a tip from Monica on that thing. A tip on the meet, create a calendar entry with the meeting name, open the event and create the meeting link from there. That's yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That, mm -hmm. that totally rocks. Love that. Um, had to share this. This is great. This is from Janelle. Did you all see this? I use Flipgrid to check in with my students. Response, two truths and one lie about what you've been doing since we've seen each other in the coronavirus, some travels or anything that you've been doing. <laughs> I love that. Talk yeah. about community. I really, really like that. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I, um, I've, I've been working on this project. It's this website called Online Learning Ideas. And you can go to onlinelearningideas.com. This is a collaboration between me and uh, Holly Clark, who's another ed tech blogger and author and speaker. Um, and we've been sponsored by Microsoft to create this. And basically what this is, let's see if I can turn that off. There we go. It's basically just a spot where... Um, we're pulling in a bunch of resources that other people have created and linking out to them. So if you're thinking, oh my goodness, there's all of these resources all over the place on doing this remote learning and I just can't keep up with everybody's stuff. We're trying to make this friendly home base where you can go and where you can find things. And um, I know we had under our big ideas, it's our goal to do one big idea a week and pick like one thing that we want to do kind of a deep dive on and um, the, the one big idea was about asking the question, what do kids really need from their teachers? Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that Holly uh, spelled out was connection. And she made this really great graphic. We kind of collaborated on it together. 10 fun ways to connect with students. And if you're looking at this graphic and you're going, oh, I want to read this. I'm going to see this. I want to download this and keep it forever. <laughs> you can go to onlinelearningideas.com and it's under the big idea. Um, but this is 10 fun ways to connect with students. And she had lots of really good stuff here. Um, doing a flip rig topic of would you rather doing a seesaw morning check-in doing a flip grid topic about what I miss about school, because let's face it, they probably do miss school. Yeah. Here's a book creator activity, doing a fun story starter. The teacher starts a collaborative story and book creator and the kids add to it. Do an Adobe spark show and tell or my dream vacation where you use, um, Adobe Spark video in this case, have students create a video showing something from their home. Mm -hmm. And then um, using Sway, Sway is kind of like a, um, like a web page creator. So you could use Sway, you could use Adobe Spark page or Google Sites or whatever. Acts of kindness tiles. Students create a Sway or Google Slides collaboration where they share ways they can show kindness while out of school. Thought those were really, really good. And so, um, that infographic is available at onlinelearningideas.com and it's under the big ideas category right there if you want to mm -hmm. check that out. So those are nice. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's go on to another question. Whew, okay. This half hour is flying by. I know. We're at like 28 minutes right now. If you're yeah. like you really, really want to stick to the 30 minutes, you feel free to jump off at 30 minutes. Yeah. But we've got a couple of other really good questions that I think you're going to want to hang around with. So we'll try to we'll try to go through them quickly. Um, so let's go on to question three. What does formative assessment look like in remote learning? How mm -hmm. do you take those pulse checks? Because it's so easy to just say, oh, I'm going to do a Google form and put mm -hmm. some multiple choice and have it auto graded and boom assessment done. Um, and Steph, this is something that you kind of feel passionate about, right? Yeah, I am. I, I, I love the term pulse checks because I think we, in our heads, I've got the, you know, I've got the content, then I've got the teacher edition, you know, standard qu fill in the blank quiz. And then we're going to do some more lecturing and then we're going to have the end of the unit test. So to me, pulse checks, go beyond and with the technology today it doesn't have to be thumbs up thumbs down so i think it's like especially now we really do more than ever need to check in and see how the kids not only how they're feeling but making sure they're really understanding something because a lot of them are in isolation if they don't have siblings if they're a latchkey kid um so i think my idea of formatives right now in the COVID 19 age i suppose is to get kids to do more creating, to show you what they can do. Let them make a video. Let them make a book in Book Creator. Um, 
let them talk and comment is actually, I don't know if anyone's heard of it. It's an extension. I read about it in Holly's book, the Google Infused Classroom. What was it again? What was the tool? Talk and comment. Talk and comment. Oh, yeah. yeah I yeah. remember that. And it's just an extension where all, all it does just give kids an audio voice very quickly, nothing fancy, um, to to speak over what they're learning. And I think, you know, John Meehan was John Meehan was talking about the guy did. Um, oh my God, what's the book? What's the adrenaline game? Rush. Yes, Adrenaline Watch. Thank you. He was saying that this is the time for kiddos to start pursuing passion projects. And I think we need to let go of the idea of. Here's our multiple choice check-ins. Here's let them talk, let them show, let them create. Oh, I think that's I think that's fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if we've ever you know, um, genius hour and passion projects and all that is something mm -hmm. that we've you know kind of dabbled in. Some some of us have used more than than others, but by golly, if there is a time to do it, I think maybe now is the time. So yeah. Um, I'm going to put talk and comment into the chat in okay. case you want to check that out. Um, let's take a look at some of the answers here. Um, here's what Mandy says. Mandy says, I've used Google Forms and I send them feedback through Google Classroom mm -hmm. and let them keep working until they have all the answers correct. That's good. That's good. Um, she also says, since Mandy is quick on the keyboard tonight, <laughs> I use Edpuzzle when they need to watch a video and check for understanding. I love Edpuzzle. I love, love, love Edpuzzle. I just think yep. it, it's great for, we keep talking about even our, how are we going to meet our differentiated, you know, how are we going to meet the needs of our different learners? And I think Edpuzzle is another way to do that. So. Yeah, absolutely. Looks like Pam's going to bug out. She's going <laughs> to yeah. watch my card. <laughs> you're watching Avengers in there. You're going to go watch Picard. Hey, I get it. That's cool. We were happy to have you for 30 minutes. So that's great. Um, all right. Here's Jen. Jen um, uh -huh. You said a seven. You said a seven. <laughs> <laughs> she says, our district said we're not allowed to take grades or give tests and that all of our work is to be review of material. I subscribe to the creative lessons, digital Ooh. labs. This is kind of like the challenges I was talking about earlier. And um, yeah. Jen, I would love to hear a follow-up from you on this. If you've been able to give any of these creative lessons, like are yeah. the kids kind of digging them and doing them anyway, even though they're not for a grade? I'm really curious to hear about that. You know, Oof, review. It's yeah. <laughs> so, um, Monica says, she says, I shared this week with your blog post about mm -hmm. forms, the flipped learning forms, choose your own adventure. Yeah. All of that stuff. I just realized that my, oh, the choose, choose your own, this is a great time to start doing choose your own adventures. Yeah. Um, I saw someone mention goose chase. Now that, that is my next thing to learn. I had a whole list of things I wanted to learn this year. I can't believe it's taken me this long. Uh, but I do want to learn Goose Chase EDU. I've started with the digital breakout rooms. Mandy and Carly had post had published some stuff that was super helpful. But next, I want to learn Goose Chase at EDU. Oh, I think we lost Matt. Okay. Well, then it's me. Uh, I'm look, just going to sit here and I'm going to be a good co-host and go through your comments um, with the idea of what are we doing with formatives. So Krista is saying my district directive center, no grades, no new content. So Krista, I'd be interested to know if you can't have grades and you can't have new content, how are you engaging them daily? That would be an interesting thing to see too. So if you will just from until we can get Matt back on, cause he's literally running the show. What I'm going to do is just go through comments. Um, is it possible to have a website 10 fun ways? Oh, thank God. Oh you my did God. Great stuff. I, <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm still oh such a rookie at this. I, I got my um, power <laughs> unplugged. <laughs> and is, <laughs> Did you all just watch Stephanie have a heart attack right there on camera? It was probably very entertaining. Um, my battery just died and I, I went and plugged it back in and got restarted as fast as I could. So, um, no, that was, that was good. And we've gotten plenty of time to read Monica's comment here, so I can just take that off of there. Mm -hmm. So, um, what did I miss? No, <laughs> uh, yeah, me panicking. Um, how about that? 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. So actually, but, Carly, Carly answered a question I, I had asked. She said that they weren't supposed to introduce new content. Um, and I'm seeing Carla, Carla Butts is saying the same thing that, you know what, they're reviewing, because I made a poo poo face when um, uh, our Missouri friend, I was like, Ugh. Uh, about doing the review, but Carly made it said, you know, we're doing it fun ways with games. So, okay, now I'm, now I'm back. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All yeah, right. there it is. Yep. Here's Jen one more time. We're weak. Oh yeah, that's right. Cause I had asked earlier. Um, remember I'm just getting back here. So I'm just catching yeah. back up with y'all. She says we're week one and I'm about 50% completion rate with my digital lab activity. Hey, pretty good for something that's not um, not a sign. And my create a superhero genetics activity. I'm trying nice. love advice. Those are brilliant. That's like high five to Jen on this one. That's, that's really good. Yeah. Let's do this last question real quick. Okay. okay. You all are doing great, by the way. I hope you're enjoying this as much as we are. Cause I am, I'm having a blast spending time with okay. all of you. Here's number four. How can we get students creating instead of just consuming and remote learning? Because, um, it's so easy to just send a bunch of um, links out and have kids read things and then go answer questions. And like, there's probably a lot of that that's going on right now, whether it's in digital form or in packet form or whatever. But um, I really believe, and I know, um, you know, Holly Clark, my uh, co-conspirator on this online learning ideas website, uh, she's really passionate about remaking assessments so that students are actually making something, creating something digitally with what they've learned and to be able to show uh, show what they know. And um, mm -hmm. Steph, I see you nodding your head. Is this sort of clicking with yeah. you? Yeah, um, I mentioned it to my ebook. They said, listen, um, we need to remember that the internet exists. So try to design lessons and activities that are ungoogleable. And what that means then is, guess what? You let them create. So I think mm -hmm. we're tempted to take our worksheets and our study guides and put them all online. But I am a big fan of questions. So for example, um, instead, you know, we're, we always put those I can statements in our classrooms. Right. I can multiply mixed fractions. I can, mm -hmm. I, I can define mitosis. Mm -hmm. What if we took those statements and made them questions? Can you define mitosis? Show mm -hmm. me. And that's all we said. Imagine mm -hmm. if we just, just show me whatever you want. Screencast define a, a rap video, however you want to do it. So I, I think we always need to remember because I watched, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this out loud and in public and I'm going to out my kid. I was watching him doing online learning today and all he did was go on Google and look up the answers. Mm -hmm. Yep. If that's the way that the lesson is built, then, you know, it's like um, I heard somebody say once that every process is perfectly designed to get the results that it gets. Ooh. Think about that one and let that simmer in your brain for a minute. Every process is perfectly designed to get the results that it gets. So if the, if the process of the activity that we assign, yeah. it is designed to get the results that it gets. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, Thank sorry you. if I made your mind blow there a little bit. That wasn't me. That was a friend of mine that shared that with me. Um, P.S. You know, I'm not used to thinking this hard at 1040. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, P.S. Steph, you have some fans of how you did it running the show by yourself. She was awesome. You did, you did great. Nice work, Steph. Keep going. Good job. There you go. You guys are all very supportive of yeah. my co moderator. So um, let's see what else we've got related to our question. Uh, Carly's talking about Mandy's choose your own. Oh, yeah, because Mandy does those choose your own adventure projects herself. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, she says, I love my choose your own adventure project that students do. It gives them an assessment option for some of my units. Students love them. Mandy, I know you have a blog post about this. We would love it if you would drop the link into the chat so that we well, can Mandy go. Also, yeah, yeah, Mandy also has the world's best title for her blog. Oh, that's <laughs> right. Infinitely teaching, right? Yeah. <laughs> Making math not suck. Wait. Oh, right? that one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah, she's kind of got both of those things going. So um, here's one from Monica. Our district is doing STEAM Day next Thursday, hoping to give teachers a day to collaborate while students tinker. Nice. Okay. That's cool. Uh, Krista says, I've had very positive emails from parents for what we're doing and how much we're doing. Yeah. And see, you know, I think, let me get on my soapbox for just a teeny tiny second here. 
I think when we do this and we do it well, it is so important right now. Um, I've seen some folks on Twitter hollering about, you know, we just need to shut everything down and quit it because digital learning isn't working. I don't know. I think that it's in some places it's being done not so well, but I think when it's done well, it like, it gives kids something to get excited about, to, you know, sink their brains into. I think it fulfills such an important purpose. And especially when we're doing it collaboratively, they're working together with their classmates. I think what we're doing is such important, important work right now. Steph, what do you think? Oh, I do too. I, th I you don't just say, I, I, it, it astounds me when someone says, oh, let's just throw it out. It's not going to work. I, I've encouraged, I did a webinar yesterday and, um, and a lot of comments from teachers who were like, oh, I don't know how to use that. I'm afraid. I don't look dumb. And I said, you know what? Okay. Um, and I didn't say anything to Laura and Pam before, you know, I live with two boys. We are Marvel freaks. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, here's the best metaphor. I was, a, I, I said, let me, let me put it this way. Be a superhero to your kids, but be a vulnerable superhero. Remember when Tony Stark, you know, and, and, and came, he's like, you know, he's hurt and he has to call on the rest of the Avengers to do it himself. I said, your students are the rest of the Avengers. So even if you say to them, I don't know how to do this, but I want to try it, share that with them, be a vulnerable superhero in front of your kids. I guess that's the best way I can say that. Yep. No, I totally, totally agree with you. Absolutely. Um, here's one from James, like Matt says, and actually I'm going to, I'm going to fix the attribution of this because I'm always quoting Dave Burgess, the author of teach like a pirate who says that don't just do the work, create an experience, or don't just teach a lesson, create an experience. Mm -hmm. Great opportunity to make this happen using ed tech. And James, I couldn't agree more with you on this. I think mm -hmm. whenever we see, this is one of the, the little things that's going to come out of my book, tech, like a pirate that's coming out, um, in about a month Ooh. or so, um, yeah. yeah, a little, uh, shout out to that. Um, no, one of the things that I, I talk about in the book is looking at your activity through a new lens. Like what's the lens you could look at this activity through? Um, real quick example to tell you what I'm talking about there. If the activity is for you to, um, to talk about the events that happened or like details that happened in a certain historical event, you know, that at the assignment is let's recall some of those and show that we understand them. But if we look at it through kind of like a different lens, what we're doing there is the lens could be as a TV news anchor. You know, you could give it, a, give those, those details as the news anchor for a news show mm -hmm. or the lens could be, um, you know, through like a um, reality game show, like cash cab or something like, mm -hmm. can you recall those events? or an on the scene news reporter or something like that. Like yeah. whenever you look at the activity through a creative lens, it gets a whole new feel. And I think that's where you can really create those experiences. So yeah. Um, off my and I'm, actually, I'm learning a lot just even being home with my kids. Um, both of my boys are gamers. And so I started playing with the discord app because even my kid, my, my, my soft, my college kid goes, mom, you could totally text with kids in discord. He goes, in fact, more kids are on Discord than like in Google Classroom. So then I'm just, he goes, mom, you should get on Discord. And then he would, when I said we were streaming tonight, he's like, are you going to use Twitch? And I'm like, dude, I don't know. Twitch. I'm, all, I'm only human. I'm a Gen Xer. I'm trying to learn this stuff. Mm -hmm. But I, I'd be interested. It was funny. I, I, I know a couple. I've been meeting people on Twitter who are using Discord just to even communicate with their kids that way. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's just all about learning, just trying and learning and playing in the digital sandbox. Yep. Yep, exactly. Flexibility done mm -hmm. safely. Totally agree. Let's look at some mm -hmm. more of the comments. Here's one from Laura PBL with Flipgrid presentations, choice boards that include art, movement, and music. Have students create an Easter egg and hide it in a presentation video. Oh, that's clever. I've never thought of doing that. That's great. Yeah. Or an essay or an artwork or something like yeah. that. Love those. Here's another one. This is from Mandy. She says, I've had students create a picture to demonstrate their new vocabulary. I've done this in the classroom too, but it's worked well for distance learning. Yep. Totally, totally agree with that. Mm -hmm. Um, think that's great. Um, Tina said Oprah. I don't know what that's for, but I approve of that. Um, Mandy's choose your own adventure. We already got to that. 
Oh, here's Paulino. Actually, you know what, folks? Um, this guy's been doing it. And I saw he mentioned this real early on in the chat. Paulino has been teaching languages online for years and years and years and years. Um, so go search him out. If you if you don't follow him on Twitter, this is a guy who's been doing it for a while. If you've got questions, he's a good person to ask. Content connected to home environment and family, exploration instead of regurgitation. Oh, yeah. Ooh, exploring. Love that. That was great. Um, student choice boards. Oh my goodness, Janelle. Yeah. Like if there was ever a time for student choice boards where you have a variety of different options and kids get to pick, boy, I think now is the time mm -hmm. for that. Um, what else have we got here? We've got one from Laura. Uh, the Easter egg would be content nugget that you have, uh, you have to create instead of. Oh, students do it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Students can create an escape room for your content for their family. That sounds like fun. Mm -hmm. uh, Google Meet extensions. I, don't I can't. It was, I don't know the name of it. It was the grid thing that oh, makes yeah. it. But I don't know what the name of the extension is. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Yeah. yeah. Someone, Mandy, I, someone drop it in the chat, please. Yeah. <laughs> Sean's yeah. giving Laura some some fives there. He's on uh, Discord. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is good. Um, oh, we'll we'll wrap it. We'll do this one as the last one here. Challenging yeah. kids to be creative offline too. This virtual learning doesn't need to be hundred percent online. Exactly. Couldn't have said <laughs> that better myself. As as oh, Matt and I both have blanket forts in our house. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah that's right. And right out that door. If I, <laughs> my battery wasn't so close to dying, I would unplug just like I did for Steph and go show you the blank. Yeah. Board. So talk so. about offline. Yeah, we've been we've been using our engineering skills skills to try to build blanket forts in our house. So yeah. and and even the Legos came out this week that haven't oh, seen man. the Lego in six years. So that's awesome. That's awesome. Love it. Okay. Guess what? We've been at this for forty six minutes or so. Oh. This has been fantastic. Um, I would love to hear from any of you. Either shoot me a tweet. I'm at J Matt Miller on Twitter. Uh, Steph is um, S DeMichael. You spell that right? Yep. And it's weird to spell my name, so you know. My last name. Here, I actually here. Let's do this. Let's turn this off. And mm -hmm. oh, looky here. There is Stephanie's Twitter oh. handle right there. So um, you make yeah. A goofy face if you want to like. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I hope somebody screen captured that. Yeah, no, but um, let me know what you think about this. I've been, and just in case you're wondering, I've been playing with this new tool called StreamYard. That's what we're doing this live video call on that lets us um, have guests and put the banners up with the questions and throw your answers up on the screen. I thought it was super fun. Um, and we've been doing Twitter chats for a long time, but I'm thinking, hey, mixing one of these in every once in a while would be an awful lot of fun. And yeah. we could even get more moderators on than just you know the two of us like we did this mm -hmm. time. So um, shoot me a tweet, drop me a message into the comments here, send me an email. It's matt at ditchthattextbook.com, any of the above. And let me know what you think about this. Like, mm -hmm. um, should we do more of these? Cause I think these, this was a lot of fun. I like so. this too. I yeah. do. I, I like the connection. It's it's we're all isolated in distance, so it's nice to connect. And I want to thank everyone. I love. I've gotten such great ideas too in the comments. So thank you all so much for sharing your stuff. That's great. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. So we're gonna wrap this up real quick. So I'm going to wish all of you a fond farewell and a yep. thank you again for participating in the chat. Um, we're going to continue, you know, I just got this, this fun little tool here. So expect more of these live streams and um, we'll uh, catch up with you on Twitter. So again, thanks so much for joining and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye. See ya.